people use the term calories in, calories out. And they say, well, that's way too simplistic. And I'm like, if you look at what actually makes up calories in, calories out, it's actually very complicated, right? So let's deal with the, uh, what you mentioned first, what is a calorie? Because I think a lot of people don't quite understand this. So a calorie just refers to a unit of energy, of heat specifically. And so well, what does that have to do with food? What does that have to do with like what we digest and eat? Really what you're talking about is the potential chemical energy that is in the bonds of the macronutrients of food, right? And by digesting, assimilating, and metabolizing those nutrients, we're able to create energy. And the end product of that mostly is ATP, um, adenosine triphosphate, which is your body's uh, energy currency. So to understand ATP, just try to think about if you're trying to power these various reactions in your body, um, and we're talking about tens of thousands of enzymes that require ATP, um, you know, it doesn't make sense that you would have to create a bunch of micro explosions, <laughs> right? You want something that can transfer high energy phosphates to power these reactions, to give up essentially its energy to power something that might otherwise be unfavorable. So a lot of metabolism is simply creating ATP, which the end of the line of that, I'm gonna kind of work backwards, is what's called oxidative respiration. So that happens in the mitochondria. Everybody's heard mitochondria powerhouse of the cell. And that is done uh, through essentially creating a hydrogen ion gradient across the mitochondria, which powers the production of ATP by converting free phosphate plus ADP to ATP. Now, the way that hydrogen ion gradient is created is through, uh, you know, creating hydrogen ions that can be donated through the Krebs cycle. Now, the Krebs cycle is linked to glycolysis. So if we talk about carbohydrate metabolism, carbohydrates basically, other than fructose, get converted into glucose, which can go into glycolysis. And you can produce some ATPs through glycolysis. And then it boils down to pyruvate, then acetyl-CoA, which goes through the Krebs cycle, produces a lot more ATPs from that. Uh, if you talk about protein, Protein's a little bit different because protein uh, gets converted to amino acids, which can be used for muscle protein synthesis or protein synthesis in other tissues. Uh, but it also can be converted through gluconeogenesis to glucose. And there also are some ketogenic amino acids as well. Um, and so you can have a few different ways to get to the Krebs cycle, either it being through um, acetyl-CoA or through glucose going through the glycolysis to pyruvate. Then you have fatty acids, which um, are able to create energy through what's called beta oxidation, where essentially you're taking these fatty acids and you're lopping them off two carbons at a time to produce acetyl-CoA, which again can go into the Krebs cycle, produce those hydrogen ions that can then power the production of ATP. So that's kind of like at the cellular level of how this stuff works. But stepping back and taking it back out, like well, what does that have to do with weight loss or weight gain, right? Well, when you think about the balance of energy in versus energy out, sounds very simple. But let's look at what actually makes up energy in versus energy out. First of all, you've got to realize that the energy inside of the equation is more difficult to track than people think, right? So one, uh, food labels, which we like to think is being, you know, like from upon high, uh, can have up to a 20% error in them. Really? Oh yeah. So yeah. 100 calorie, is something listed as 100 calories per serving, it could, what's actually in there could be, could be 80, 80 or 120. Right, exactly. Huh. So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect is there's what's called your energy, but then there's also metabolizable energy, right? So if you have uh, food stuff with say a lot of insoluble fiber, typically insoluble fiber uh, is not really digestible. And so you could have, you know, quite a bit of carbohydrate, you know, but if you can't extract the energy from it and typically this is because insoluble fiber from like plant material the carbohydrate or and even some of the protein is bound up in the uh, plant structure which makes it inaccessible to digestive enzymes and so this is what like adds bulk to your school stool and whatnot 
but again, reduces the metabolizable energy in there. And there's some evidence that based on people's individual gut microbiome, that some people may actually be better at extracting energy out of fiber compared to other people. So just starting off right there, okay, there's, there's quite a bit of play in the energy inside of things. Now, one of the things people will say is, well, see, that's why you shouldn't worry about tracking calories because, you know, if the food labels can be 20% off. And what I'll say is, okay, that's a, that's, I understand where you're coming from, but typically if it's off, it's going to be consistently off. And if you're consistent with how you track it, eventually you'll be able to know kind of what you're taking in. And it's kind of, that's kind of like saying, well, don't worry about tracking, you know, if you're, I, I like to use financial um, examples. You know, we know that to save money, or you have to earn more money than you spend. Well, you can't exactly know how much money you're earning at a time, you know, because there's inflation and then there's, uh, if you have investments, those can be, you know, different interest rates and whatnot. It's like, okay, but you're, you know, if you have a budget, you have a reasonable idea of what it's going to be, you know, and you make, you make certain assumptions, but you can relatively guess. Yeah, that's a good example. Right. So now let's look at the energy outside of the equation, which is actually way more complicated, right? And so your energy out is a few different uh, buckets. The first one and the biggest one is your resting metabolic rate, so your RMR. And that for most people is anywhere from 50 to 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. Now people use the term metabolic rate and energy expenditure kind of interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. So your total daily energy expenditure is the summation of all the energy you expend in a day. Walking right? upstairs, Everything. exercise if you do it. Fidgeting, okay. yeah. Plus your resting metabolic rate. Right, so resting metabolic rate is a big part of that, but it's not the only thing. So that's usually about 50 to 70%. And sedentary people will be on the higher end of that, so it'll be a bigger proportion, whereas people who are more active, it'll be a little bit lower not because their metabolic rate is lower, but because they're expending a greater percentage of their calories from physical activity. Then you have something called the thermic effect of food, which is a relatively small percentage of your total daily energy expenditure. It's about five to 10%. Uh, and very difficult to measure. And usually what researchers do when they're kind of looking at this stuff is they just kind of make an assumption about it. They use a constant. Uh, but that's about five to 10% of your daily energy expenditure. And that refers to the amount of energy it takes to extract the energy out of food. So think about your body kind of like a car, right? You don't just have gas in your tank and it spontaneously starts up, right? Like you have to have a battery, so you put in energy so you can get the energy out of the, the petrol that you have in your car. Similar with, with food, you can't just eat food and then you know it just appears in your cells and you start doing stuff. It has to be systematically broken down and put into forms that can actually produce energy. And so you have to put some energy in to achieve that. And a lot of times people will say something like, well, not all calories are created equal. That's not true because calories just a unit of measurement. 